I was recently working on a project and a thought came into my mind. Is it possible to develop an idea for an app or a software program, design it, code it, deploy it, and have users actively using it after deployment, and that's the end. The idea being once it's out, it's out. We treat it like a consumer product where once the user buys it, we have no tie to them. We don't owe them anything and they don't owe us anything. No, the answer is no, by the way, but let's discuss why. Typically, you make a product like a sneaker. You design it, sell it, and once you've sold it to the user, that's it. You've sold X amount of units and you don't hear from them again, except if there's a recall or something like that. Why can't software be like that? Why can't you create an app, release it, and make millions from the paying users, specifically those who buy the app and call it a day without releasing any updates? For starters, there are these pesky little things called bugs. A bug is simply something that's not working the way it's supposed to. Sometimes it could be a simple glitch and other times it could be something causing the app or the program to crash when a specific action is performed. In extreme cases, hackers could use a bug as a backdoor to get into your app, plant malware to encrypt users' data and demand ransomware from you to release it. Some of these bugs may not be in the code that you write specifically, but they are introduced into the systems by sub-packages that your app relies on because you chose to use a pre-made package that someone else has written that performs a specific task instead of writing your own from scratch. That's the right thing to do, by the way. I like to think there are bugs in every code base you can think of. They're just laying dormant. All it takes is a specific order of operation to bring them to light. Regardless of how the bugs got into the system, they need to be fixed and patched. Otherwise, you're left with a potentially unsecured system that's riddled with bugs. Over time, this will result in a system that no one wants to use. This leads to my second point, optimization. Regardless of how you wrote the code in the beginning, there is always room for optimization. Processes change and people come up with faster or more efficient ways to perform the same tasks and actions. In the early days of the internet, when you refresh the web page, the application would always pull data from the database even if nothing has changed. Over time, as data got bigger, developers started optimizing their applications to cache data and only pull from the database if there was a change, saving time and, and blah, 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 saving time and enhancing the user's experience. There was also a time when services within applications were built coupled together, meaning if one thing failed, the whole system was down. Nowadays, complex systems are built using a microservice architecture where each service is responsible for doing only one thing, limiting the spread if it goes down. This is why Amazon tracking may be down, but you can still purchase something from the Amazon website or why one part of Instagram may work, but a specific feature is not working. It wasn't always like this. These systems have been optimized over time to be resilient and robust, making sure all the services aren't down all at once. These are just a few examples, but I'm sure you get the point. There will always be room for optimization. Hypothetically, let's say you managed to build a system that has no bugs and is as optimized as possible. There's still one factor that you have to worry about, people. Of all the factors you have to consider when building software, people are the most important and one of the hardest to figure out because they can be unpredictable. For starters, certain people will almost always use the service you've built in a way that you've not intended or in a way that you didn't account for. This will produce bugs that you didn't even know could exist. In addition to this, people get tired of seeing the same thing repeatedly, even though it works. Companies usually want people to talk about their apps and the best way to do that is to give them something to talk about. The way your favorite app looked in 2016 or 2017 probably isn't the way it looks now. Most companies do UI hauls, redesigning their entire user interface every three to five years to keep up with design trends and to evolve with the current time even if their main service hasn't changed. There are probably a few apps that have been released, updated a few times to fix major bugs and haven't been updated since then. An example I can think of is this teleprompter app I bought a while ago to shoot my videos. It hasn't been updated in a year, but it works perfectly fine with great reviews. However, specific functionalities rely on external systems like Google Drive and iCloud. The moment one of those systems updates their terms of use or no longer supports a specific action, there will be a bug that needs to be fixed, making sure that the app is compatible with the changes, leading us right back to where we started bugs. Maybe in the future, there'll be a time when we can write software that can fix itself and update itself with the latest trends based on a config file or something. There are apps today that can self-diagnose when they have an issue, and I like to think we're not too far from an app that fixes its own bugs. Now, what does this mean for me, you, and other software developers? Well, as long as there's software, we'll always have a job. 
Among other things, there will always be a bug to fix, a process to optimize, and a new user experience to build. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching and catch you on the next one.